Hello, welcome to this training session for Smart DS Smart Virtual Simulator by Intelligent Hearing Systems. Today I will walk you through performing an otoscope examination, tympanometry, acoustic reflex, audiometry, and speech test using the play patient Mike Jones. In the interest of time, I have already generated my patient report. I'm using Word, but you can use any other word processing or documentation program. My report is open to the side as displayed here. I have started my report by entering the patient name. To begin working in Smart Via, select Appointments, highlight Mike Jones, and click Open Patient. It will take a few seconds for the patient demographics to load up as the patient creates the patient folder and links it to the simulator profile. This will create a unique identifier where all of the patient's data will be stored. Click OK to finish registering the patient in our patient management database. Before starting examination, click on the referral button to review the referral notes. Here you will find out why the patient was referred for testing. And in the pre-briefing section, you will be able to assess what the professor is requesting of this assignment. Please note your professor may give you verbal or written instructions that may be different from the pre-briefing notes listed on the electronic copy of the profile. Please adhere to your instructor's assignment. Next, select History. Here you will see a list of questions pertaining to your patient. You may copy and paste any important history notes or any of the referral or pre-briefing information into your patient report, either using a copy-paste function or using the copy to clipboard option. Once you have reviewed the referral and history information, you may exit this box. Now, let us launch Smart Audiometer software by clicking the Smart Odd module icon. Here, you will find the program and the test room. The test room is available in all Smart VS modules. Click the test room icon to open it. Here, you will find the test room. Inside the test room, you will find the patient's avatar along with a tool cabinet that contains your instrument, your skin prep gel, electrodes and leads, transducers, and testing ear tests. Click on the copy patient picture to clipboard and paste onto your report documentation program. Before we begin testing, please note more measurement instruments, supplies, electrodes, and stimulators will be added to the cabinet as Smart BS is expanded in the future. From the operational point of view, if the instrument used for testing is placed incorrectly or ear tips used, are the wrong size, you will see a message such as too loose or ouch generated by the patient. To begin the otoscope examination, select your otoscope instrument from the instrument tab by left clicking on it. This will place the instrument in this location, active for testing. Now you can move the instrument over to your avatar and place it in the ear canal. Press down with your left mouse click in order to view the ear canal. Select copy last image to clipboard and use your paste function to transfer the image over to your report as necessary. Move the instrument over to the opposite ear. If it is placed incorrectly, you will see the ouch message. Otherwise, you will see the image of the left ear canal. Select copy last image to clipboard and transfer that over to your report. To return the instrument back to your testing cabinet, use the red up arrow. Now click on the tympanometer to activate that instrument for testing. Place it over the avatar and into the ear. Press down on the button to generate your tympanometry graph. Once the graph is completed with its value, you can let go 
and click on Copy Left Image to Clipboard and use your Paste function to copy it over to your patient report. We repeat the test measurement on the opposite ear. Press with your left mouse click to generate your tympanometry results. Once the graph is completed, you can let go of the mouse and select Copy Last Image to Clipboard to transfer those results to your report. Return the instrument to the cabinet using the up red arrow. Now click on the Acoustic Reflex Probe to activate that instrument for testing. It will be placed on the tray. Move it over to your avatar and place it in the air canal with a single left mouse click. Now press down with your mouse on the blue button to generate your test results. This will generate your graph along with your test measurement value. Use the copy plus image to clipboard to transfer that result over to your patient report. Double click on the probe to swap to the opposite ear. Place in the ear canal with a left mouse click. Press down on the red button with your mouse to generate the results for your right ear. This will generate your measurements. You can copy that image to clipboard to transfer that over to your patient report. If you require the acoustic reflex decay measurement, please place a check mark here and repeat your test. Press down with your left mouse until the report is generated with your values and your DK measurements. Copy that image to clipboard to transfer those results over to your patient report. Again, you can double click to go to the opposite ear, swap the probe, left click to place, left click press down to generate your graph for that opposite ear with decay measurements. Copy image to clipboard again and paste into your report. And then you can double click to return the probe back to the tray and select your up arrow to take the instrument back into the cabinet. To review the report, as you can see here in my display, we have the patient name. You can enter referral notes, pre-briefing, assignment, history notes, patient picture, your otoscope images, your tympanometry measurements, your reflex measurements, your acoustic reflex with decay measurements. And now we will move on to audiometry. Now we will begin pure tone audiometry testing. Arrange the test room window and smart odd window so that you can see the patient's avatar while using the audiometer as shown on the screen. Being able to see the patient will make it easier to observe their responses. Now click on the Smart Odd module to begin. Select the stimulus menu and set your transducer to insert earphones. You have other transducers that you can also use headphones, bone, and sound field. Headphones will be added in the near future. Next, you can set your intensity step in 1, 2, 5, or 10 dB step. This will indicate how your intensity list will be changed. You can also set your masking on or off and set a masking level in this menu. Let us begin by placing and connecting or setting up the patient with the insert earphones. So we proceed back into the test room and select the transducer tab. Left click on the insert earphone transducer, then proceed to testing tip, select your sound tube, and your ear tip. Please note that ear tip selection is critical for your patient avatar. In this case, we are testing a male adult who will tend to have a larger ear canal. If you would have selected the bathed ear tip, the patient would have reacted with a too loose message. Once the instruments are in the tray, they may be placed on the patient avatar. You place the insert just with a single left mouse click. Proceed back to transducer and select your transducer for the left ear, along with the ear tubes and ear tip. Now your patient is set up 
for air conduction pure tone audiometry testing. Once the patient is set up, you can begin testing inside your smart audiometer module. There are two ways to select frequency and intensity. One is through the list, as shown here, and another is directly on the audiogram. As you will see on the audiogram, we have frequency against intensity, and these lines of intersections will show you that, for example, here you have selected 1,000 at 50 dB. You can output sound in various ways. You can right-click, and that will show you your outputting sound, and the patient will show you whether they have a response or not by indicating yes, or no response will not have any response, and there will be a vote button as well. And you can click anywhere on the audiogram, and this will change your intensity and frequency selection. So here you have 2,000 hertz at 30 dB. I can right-click and output sound. As you can see, there is a timestamp here of how long the sound is on. You can also output sound by clicking the output button. And if you place a check mark next to the speaker box, this will be continuous output. Once you have identified a threshold, you can double click on the intersection point to score the threshold or use the score button here and here. There are several symbols that will be used to score the threshold. The blue X and red circle will be for air conduction left and right ear thresholds respectively while the blue upside down triangle and the red triangle will be for the left and right bone threshold. Sound field scores are represented in red and blue squares, and if masking is used, a black dot will be present within the symbol. You can use the greater than score button if you wish to indicate that the threshold may be higher, or the score less than button if you wish to indicate that the threshold may be lower. That way or that way. To remove a score point, simply select the remove button. Again, before we begin testing, when a patient has heard the sound, a message will appear with a yes indication and the vote button will turn red. When the patient has not heard anything, nothing will happen. So let's begin testing. Select your right ear and select your frequency. Let's start at 4 kilohertz and intensity, let's start at 50 dB. And so as you can see, now my intersection points are at 4 kilohertz and 50 dB. I will be able to go down in intensity simply by doing a left click on each intensity that I want to select. Going back, now to output sound, you click and press down on your right mouse button. That will output sound. We have a yes vote. So using our 10 down, 5 up technique, we're going to go down in 10 dB steps. Output sound, yes. You let go of your mouse, right mouse key, and then select your left mouse to select your intensity, and then output sound. And we continue to go down, output sound. We have sound. So this is a no response, so we're going to do our first reversal up to 5 dB. No response. We'll go back here. Yes response. We're going to go back down, reverse again, second reversal. No response. Yes, we have a response. So this is going to be our third reversal. No response. You can do anywhere from three to six reversals depending on what your professor teaches you. Response. 
no response. So let's call it at 10 dB. And we proceed over and do the same thing for uh, 2,000, 1,000, and 500 hertz. When you are done with your audiogram, you can enter in, and I'm just going to mark just different points just so that you can see how the thresholds are marked. If I were to do 750 here, let's do here, this one. So this would be similar to what your final audiogram will look like. And then you would go here to audiogram. You would enter in a comment. And in this case, I'm just going to put video sample test. And that would be saved as part of your audiogram. And then you can click on save audiogram as new file. If I were to load an audiogram, I can select here, and here's the list of audiograms. For example, I have air conduction inserts right and left here. Uh, this comment says air conduction, burn conduction, and obviously this is the one we just saved right now. If I were to select this one, we can load that. And here you see an audiogram for the right ear as well as the left ear. As you can see, there is a gap in the air conduction results. If I were to do the both right bone conduction and air conduction results, I can click on load audiogram and select here. And here we can see both bone conduction and air conduction results. And we can clearly see that there is an air bone gap or conductive hearing, unilateral hearing loss on the left ear from this audiogram. Next. You can go over to Report, and you can copy audiogram image to clipboard and paste your audiogram into your patient report. If you wish to add the threshold value to your report as well, you can select the Report Threshold Information and print your report to PDF, and then copy and paste those values into your patient report. If you wanted to do bone conduction, what you would do is you would change your transducer here to bone. And you would go over to the transducer and you would select it on your tray and place it on your patient for testing, either right ear or left ear on your patient avatar. Let's pause for a moment and head over to the patient report just to view how it's coming along. I'm going to scroll down here, and here are the audiometry images that we copied and pasted into our patient report, along with the threshold information. To proceed with speech testing, I have returned the bone vibrator back to the instrument cabinet. Let us now set our simulator back to insert earphone via the stimulus menu and use the Clear Audiogram button to clear the audiogram. We will begin with speech recognition thresholds. If a patient does not understand a word, you will see a question mark. Otherwise, they will respond with the word they understand. The system defaults to the Spondy word list, but just to verify, you can click on Select Word List and load the SRT Spondy word list by selecting and clicking on Open. We will use a down and minard method for attaining an SRT, presenting a spondy at the lowest audiometer setting, or 0 dBHL, or 30 dB below the known pure tone audiometry threshold. We ascend in 10 dB steps until the patient repeats the spondy correctly. So let's select the first word and set the intensity dial start at 0. And we're going to select output. And the patient does not hear, so we're going to go up 10 dB. And the patient hears. The patient hears at 10 dB. We have, once we've identified this level, we actually decrease the level by 15 dB to begin the threshold search. And we will be presenting a block of two to four spondy. We increase in 5 dB steps 
until the patient receives two spondies correctly. If we're not able to obtain the SRT in the first block of words, then we move to a different block of words. So let's do the next four words. We will go down in intensity by 15 dB to minus 5. We will select northwest and we will output. Patient doesn't hear, so now we will increase by 5 dB set. Patient does not understand the word. We will increase by 5 dB set. And we have northwest, that is five, and that is at 10 dB. So northwest has been correctly identified at 10 dB. So let's go to a second spot. Go down to minus five to begin the threshold search. We output. Patient does not understand the word. Go to zero. Patient does not understand the word. And five. Patient does not understand the word. Ten. Patient understands the word. So now we have reached the criteria of two spondies correctly identified. Uh, they were both identified at 10 dB. So the SRT for the right ear is 10 dB. And you would repeat the same. For the left ear, if we go to the left ear, we will go down to minus 5 dB, and let's do the next set of four words. We're starting with doormat, and we will output, patient does not hear, increase by 5 dB. Increase by 5 dB. Door map has been identified at 40 dB. So now we will decrease by 15 dB, so we're going to go down to 25 to start the threshold search for the left ear, and we will begin with eardrum, and we will output. Fantastic, the eardrum has been identified at 40 dB. And let's do iceberg. Iceberg has been identified at 45. So let's go back down to try to get agreement with the ear hole, with the eardrum. And we have a 40 identification of iceberg. And so the SRT for the left ear is 40 dB. Right ear was 10 dB and left ear 40 dB. You can choose to mark the threshold on the audiogram and comment it as SRT and save it or simply record your speech recognition threshold directly on your document report as shown here. Now, let us proceed to the word recognition score test. We will load the word recognition score word list from here. Select word list, choose the speech WRS word list, click open, and that will load your word recognition score test word list. To begin testing, Select the test ear and then set the intensity level to 25 dB above your SRT for that ear. In this case, 
This patient's right ear intensity would be 35 dB and the left ear intensity would be 65. Let's begin to test. If the patient responds to the words correctly, you will record it in your document as a correct response. Otherwise, you will record the response that was given. This is a 50-word list with two points per word for 100%. Each word that is incorrect would be two points taken away from the 100 percentage point. Let's select the first word, ear right, and intensity for the right ear will be set to 35. And now we output, and that is correct. Select vote, output, correct, pool, correct, nag, correct, limb, correct, shout, correct. You continue to do this for the 50 words. For this patient, we will have two incorrect words on the right ear for a word recognition score of 96% and four incorrect words on the left ear for a word recognition score of 92% as shown in this document here. When it is incorrect, I have recorded what was said instead of the word that was presented. And that is how we, re we obtain our percentage points. At this point, we have completed the audiometric evaluation for this patient and can close the software and the test room. So we can close the test room. We can close the software. Are you sure you want to quit? You can say yes. Now, you can go back to your history chat room and select the debriefing tab. Make sure that you have completed testing before answering the debriefing questions. Click OK. And then you can select these questions and copy and paste them onto your report. You may want to include in your report the conclusion of what you found along with the responses to the debriefing questions and provide this report for submission to your professor. Thank you for watching this training video. Please note the purpose of this video was to demonstrate software operation. It was not to teach testing technique. Refer to your professor for guidance on testing techniques. If you have any questions or suggestions, please contact our support team at smartvssupport at ihsys.com.